Hey church, I uh, wanted to kind of cast some vision here for something we're about to start uh, in a few, well, a week, uh, beginning of June, uh, a Bible reading plan or a Bible reading challenge, challenge uh, not a plan. Uh, can't we'll say why well, it's a challenge in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we, we've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. Um, you know, individually, we have different ways that we read through the Bible. Um, but corporately, we have never done anything corporately where we all try to together make it through a portion of Scripture, and we want to do the New Testament during the summer. Yeah. That's the goal. And so um, I know for our family, what we're already planning on doing is I'm, I want to read a portion of it with, with the kids, with Priscilla, uh, all together for family worship, and then have a portion where we all read privately. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so we'll kind of break it up that way yeah. because it'll be a few chapters a day. Um, We'll say more about that in a minute, but a big thing, you know, there's no command in scripture that says you have to read the Bible in the summer, um, the whole New Testament. So if you don't do this, you don't do this. But for those of you who want to grow in godliness and want to discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, uh, we wanted to provide some additional structure for that and just challenge you to to do that. And so Ken can expound more on that. Yeah, and so I think it's important to note that while we don't want to be legalistic, often it's very helpful in the life of Christ and discipleship to have structure yeah. and to have goals and to have plans. So we wanted to create a structure where the whole church goes through the same plan uh, in essentially four months. And so in four months, reading the entire New Testament won't be overwhelming mm-hmm. in, a, in a total way, but it will be a challenge yeah. rather than a plan. Yep. And so I just want to say we will be reading for breadth more than depth, Mm -hmm. right? So when you think about reading for depth, you're you're going slow through a passage. You're reading verses over and over. You're meditating. You're taking notes. You're seeking commentaries. Think about what we're doing in John's gospel right now. It's taking us years to Mm -hmm. move through because we're just mining God's Mm -hmm. word for, for what's there. We're not so much going to be doing that in this uh, challenge, but we're going to be reading for for breadth. So you'll be reading longer portions in one day and then the entire New Testament in four months. And so a few positives to that. There's there's good things for both approaches, Mm -hmm. but a few positives to reading for breadth rather than depth is you you oftentimes see repetitive themes and phrases and focuses Mm -hmm. from the author that you might not uh, if you read really slowly. Think about epistles. Uh, Paul and Peter and, and the apostolic writers, they mean for their letters to be read from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. They, are, they are epistles. And so reading them in shorter settings really does help you to get a yep. better grasp of what the author is intending and some of his specific purposes. So I think you'll really be encouraged as we as we do that. Yeah. And I mean... It- Like, why are we doing this? I think one of the big reasons is because of just the widespread illiteracy, biblical illiteracy. Um, I don't think it's an insult to any particular individual as much as just Christendom at large. People don't know their Bibles well. Um, You go to the Old Testament stories. You go to New Testament texts. um, There's just a great illiteracy mm-hmm. uh, of, of the Bible. That's partly because of less Bible preaching mm-hmm. than has historically happened, but it has a lot to do and even more to do with yeah. people just not reading their Bibles daily. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so uh, we, we can't be responsible for everybody out there in the world, but for our local church, um, we can make progress. Yeah. And, and so this is a, an attempt at that. Yeah. Um, regarding abiding you know we talked about on sunday the importance of abiding and abiding in christ and we we know that that's vital you can't have life apart from the vine right um and so how do you abide in christ well he he, jesus is very clear you abide in his word yeah i mean this is this is our life as christians is to abide in the words of god Um, And how do you do that if you're never reading the words of God? If you're not meditating and thinking through those words, you're not going to obey them. So people can go all day, oh, we we need to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yeah, but if you're not hearing, you're definitely not going to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, the hearing starts first and then the doing. And we're all about doing the word, but it starts with hearing and reading. And so this is a a step um, toward being more faithful in that. 
Yeah, and so we, we structured it a little bit differently. So we're not going to go from Matthew to Revelation like you might in a normal plan. But we've put, if you notice, first Luke and Acts together. And the reason is because Luke wrote both the Gospel of Luke and Acts. And so again, when you, and even they were in, intended to be read as sort of a part one and a part two. Mm -hmm. And you, when you read them back to back, you will see uh, the Holy Spirit really being emphasized. Mm -hmm. And you'll see themes and, uh, and, and repetitive phrases that will just jump off the, the pages to you. Um, again, some of the epistles we're reading in one sitting. Like First John, there's five chapters, and we're reading that in one day. Yeah. And and again, I, I just really believe we'll be encouraged as we uh, sit down and maybe do something we haven't ever done before. Mm. And we're ending with all the Johannian literature, starting with the Gospel of John and then mm. the Epistles of John, and ending in Revelation. Yeah. So again, you'll see a different sort of flavor of literature, uh, all from the Apostle John. And yeah. again, you'll just see. Even in a different letter, a different book, the same phrases and the same uh, rhetorical strategies. And it's mm -hmm. just really amazing. And I would just say, lastly, uh, Paul says in Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you Amen. richly. And I think Paul has in mind to the church there at Colossae the, the gospel yeah. and the teachings of yeah. Christ and the teachings of the apostles. Let them fill you. Let mm -hmm. them dwell in you richly. Yeah. And so that's what we're trying to do. Now, as you're hearing us talk about these things, you may be saying, okay, what if I miss a day? What if I miss two days and I'm six, seven, eight chapters behind? Do I quit? Do I try to mm -hmm. catch up? And I know you wanted to finish the video yeah, talking yeah. about that. B before I do, um, I got to say, he, he's saying we, uh, like we wrote this together, Kent, Kent did this uh, structure and, and built this out. And then Priscilla and Jennifer have been uh, organizing the yeah. sheet and all of that. And so give credit to whom credit is due. Um, yeah, I think what's helpful about how we're going to do this is that uh, it won't be something that you get behind and you have to play catch up yeah. and read five days worth of stuff and you just yeah. get overwhelmed and never do it, which is what often happens in Bible reading plans. Yeah. The way that we want to do this is if you miss five days in a row, on that sixth day, you jump in Pick and up. you're reading right where everybody else is. Yeah. So you never get behind in that regard. Yeah. Uh, you just always pick up whatever day it is you read on that date, and you know the rest of the church is reading with you. That's good. And so it certainly will keep us from discouragement. You won't get behind playing catch up. Now you will miss what's happening in the narrative. Yeah. Like yeah. you may not, you know, get the context well, but you at least will be right where we are. That's good. And um, and I think it'll be a blessing. We're excited to do this together. Um, great way to spend our summer. Again, do it together as a family and as individuals would be an ideal way to do it. Um, but if you just read it alone, that will be excellent as well. Um, guys, love y'all. Hope this is helpful. Uh, we'll start passing these out Sunday. See you then.